on guys? Crypto Ski from CCG here and today I'm doing a fairly important video and it covers one of the biggest and most common questions you're going to get as a holder of Bitcoin and that is how does Bitcoin have value? What makes Bitcoin valuable? And believe it or not, Bitcoin has uh, many cases for why it's valuable. And in this video, I'll go down quite a few of these uh, attributes that makes Bitcoin valuable. And a lot of these are things that make money in general valuable. So let's start off with the, uh, the first one, scarcity. Bitcoin will only ever have 21 million units. 21 million Bitcoins. That's all that will ever be made. And it's a deflationary asset uh, for this reason. Whenever early adopters had Bitcoin, they might have had them on a computer, and since they weren't worth anything back then, or a few cents, uh, you know, 10 years later, when they're worth $10,000 a piece, they might not have access to those Bitcoins any longer. Uh, when someone sends Bitcoin to the wrong address, that's into the ether. It's gone. So not only is it scarce in the sense that it has a finite amount that can ever be mined, but unlike uh, current systems today, it's deflationary. There will be less and less in circulation as time goes on, which means that each unit or each Bitcoin will increase in value just because of the deflationary um, properties it has. Uh, the second thing I have on here is predictability. Um, with the U.S. dollar and the Federal Reserve System, money can be pumped into the system almost at will. You know, there's some regulation around it, but at the end of the day, that regulation doesn't involve you, and they can do what they want when they want. Uh, that means that they can debase your value um, at the whim at the whim of hat. So, Bitcoin doesn't do that. You know that every 10 minutes there's going to be a block reward. It may be a little bit above, a little bit below 10 minutes, but uh, the Bitcoin algorithm keeps that block reward around 10 minutes. Uh, Bitcoin also works in a nuclear half-life kind of style. So every four years, we call it the halvening, but uh, the block reward that's released each 10 minutes is halved. So we know uh, from now until 2140, when those 21, big, 21 million rather Bitcoins are released, uh, we know when they're going to be released and how much, almost to a T. And that's important when you talk about a financial ecosystem. Uh, utility. That is one of the biggest uh, properties that gives Bitcoin value right now. Utility. You can send value. You can send Bitcoin anywhere in the world. You can send it to anybody in the world with internet access. And you can send any amount, billions of dollars or one dollar, um, in 10 minutes or less, unless transactions are high. And with you know the evolution of technology, it'll get better. And it will be every 10 minutes, you know your transaction will be able to go through. But uh, this can all be done for a fraction of the current cost. So you can send all of this value, uh, which would cost you know 9% today, uh, for a fraction of a percent, as long as somebody has Wi-Fi and is connected. That's huge utility. That is hugely important, uh, not only for banks and our current financial systems, but for people in uh, third third world who or third world countries who don't have access to banking to be able to transact value in real time. Um, another huge property is control. We talk about this a lot in uh, the crypto sphere, the crypto ecosystem. Cryptos are at their core decentralized. That means the control is taken from one entity and uh, giving it back to the people, if you will. It's putting it in the hands of many people on the network. There's no central entity that decides the value of Bitcoin. It's market price. What are people willing to pay for it? And another thing about control or another property is that your assets cannot be seized in the same way that uh, your assets can be seized with banks. So if I'm part of a country whose uh, government I don't trust, I can't trust my value to be in their dollars or their value to be on their network because um, at any time they could take a militaristic approach and seize my assets or my value from me. Um, that's a huge problem in our world. And with Bitcoin, the control is given back to whoever owns the private key of the wallet that stores uh, your assets. 
that's 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 hugely important. Um, another pros uh, property rather is immutability. Everything's final. Whatever is written to into a blockchain, whatever becomes validated, is final and it cannot be uh, taken out. Um, this means that a debt cannot be solved with a debt. The only way to correct something on the blockchain is to add another credit to it, is to correct it on the blockchain. That's important when you talk about um, PayPal or shipping things uh, using an escrow service so you know that your item comes to you and then that money is released. Uh, there's no way you can really deal with somebody anonymously or deal with somebody who's across the globe um, without having that escrow service in the middle because either party could be a bad actor and not fulfill the, the contract that uh, you all talked about. They could accept your Bitcoin or accept your money rather and not send you uh, that value. Uh, so Bitcoin is going to solve that problem and with the increase in third party um, escrow services or building on top of the Bitcoin uh, platform, you'll be able to have a mutable record of account and still have um, the opportunity to have an escrow service so you can send objects to somebody you don't know securely and safely. Uh, one thing I'll add to the immutability aspect is uh, Bitcoin and cryptos do have a, one small problem and that's called the 51% attack. If you all want to know more about the 51% attack, uh, you can look at one of our other videos where we go um, in depth to how it works and why it is a problem and a vulnerability. But I can just tell you in this video that it's highly unlikely um, and near impossible to uh, do a 51% attack on the Bitcoin network just simply because of how large the Bitcoin network is. And um, anyone with that much power or that much control wouldn't want the network to fail because they would lose a lot of value out of them uh, working against the network. So if you're interested in uh, the 51% attack, go to one of our other videos. But moving on here, uh, we'll go into portability. So with Bitcoin, uh, you don't have to carry any physical uh, cash on you. You can simply know 12 words in your head, a mnemonic phrase, and you have access to um, you know, $1 or up to a billion or billions or even trillions of dollars um, with just knowing these 12 words. This is important for people... Um, you know, one easy use case or one easy example is someone who's leaving a country that is taken over by a regime. They don't want to have anything on them that can be simply taken away before they leave the country. They want to uh, be able to have their assets portable and uh, because of the control property of Bitcoin, those assets cannot be seized. Uh, one saying that I really like to say to uh, new clients is you could walk across the Mexican border uh, butt naked with billions or trillions of dollars on you. As long as you have access afterwards to Wi-Fi, you can remember those 12 simple words and carry all of your assets and all of your value with you anywhere you go in the entire world. Um, moving on, another property is durability. It's not physical. There's, there's nothing that can be destroyed. The only way you could uh, destroy the Bitcoin network is if you shut down the entire internet, which is uh, not really feasible to do. So when we talk about the durability of Bitcoin, you can lose it and it can be gone forever. But in, in the same sense, uh, no one can, can really destroy it. No one can take your cash and rip it up. Or um, even if you have your computer destroyed, which holds your Bitcoin or your private keys on it, you can back those up properly and uh, it's a fail-safe. It's the most durable currency we have to date. Uh, and then lastly, and uh, really important moving on to the future, is the divisibility of Bitcoin. Your dollar can be um, divided three decimal places. So it can go down to a penny, which is two decimal places. And then there are some instances, like with gas, where they'll charge you, uh, you know, nine-tenths of a cent extra at the end of the price per gallon. With Bitcoin, a unit of account, one Bitcoin can be divided eight times, eight decimal places. That's 100 million times that a Bitcoin can be broken down. This is important moving into a future where we're going to have to have microtransactions. When we have AI and robots or computers talking to each other and transacting value, that value is going to be much less than a cent. 
Um, you know, there are things like your attention that can be valued, and it's not always valued in whole sense. It needs to be able to be broken down, um, you know, up to 100 million times and transact in real time for the same price, mind you, that um, you can send $100 billion. You want to be able to send a fraction of a cent for the same price. Um, so this was pretty simple. There's eight ways that you can give value and that Bitcoin actually has value um, intrinsically. Uh, so when people ask you and they say, other than a store of value, a digital gold, why would I get into Bitcoin? I just gave you eight reasons why Bitcoin is better than the financial systems we use today. So as always, guys, thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions or need clarity on this, feel free to reach out to, um, to me or to the CCG team at GoWithCCG.com. And if you want any, any specific videos done that would help you along your um, crypto journey, just reach out to us, guys. We're open and we're happy to make these videos for you. Thank you so much.